as we are getting into the spirit of Hanukkah, tomorrow night, we'll be lighting the first candle and we'll be lighting them for eight days. Let me just give you eight messages, eight concepts that we can learn from the eight days of Hanukkah, from the candles and so on. First of all, we'll light the candle. The idea of the mitzvah is to bring in light. And this is true not only for Hanukkah, but this is true for every mitzvah and for Torah in general, as it says, ner mitzvah ve Torah or. The candle is the actual mitzvah and Torah is the light. In other words, this physical object is becoming the light which is imbued with the Torah. And this gives light to the entire world. As we know, custom, accepted custom, although there is a difference of opinion about it originally in the Talmud, we, every night we add a candle. The idea that in Judaism, in our service of Hashem, we have to ascend. Moisiv v'hoilich. We always have to go forward. We have to add, not content ourselves with what we have accomplished yesterday, but today has to be a day which shines brighter than the previous day. For yesterday it was sufficient, but today has to be even more so. As we know, the Hanukkah menorah we light towards the outside. As the original custom was, to put it by the door, some will put it at a window. I'm not going to go into now the reasons why many do it inside. We'll leave it. If God forbid, we'll still be in exile. We'll discuss it later. But in general, the concept is to light it for the outside. In other words, to bring the light of the menorah, the light of Hanukkah to the darkness outside. Illuminate the places of darkness. Not just for myself, but for others. Often, darkness brings a certain fear. We're afraid of the dark. So the Hanukkah tells us, don't be afraid of the darkness. Bring light in there. Don't allow darkness to take over your life. Find the light to illuminate it. Extremely important message here is the fact women played an important role in the whole Nes Hanukkah. As we know, it was Yehudis who th she through her selfless devotion, her self-sacrifice, she succeeded in killing her fathers and this way to save the battle. So the power of women in Judaism, the power of women in the celebration of Hanukkah, just like in any other celebration for that matter, Women play an equal and sometimes superior role to man in the whole Jewish journey. A very interesting detail is about the Shabbos. Who is the Shabbos? The Shabbos is the first candle that we light. We say then the blessings. And this Shabbos, this servant, so to say, a custodian, is being used to light the other candles. So although one could think that it is only being used as a servant, in itself it has no value. Its value is only that it lights the other candles. But interesting, the shamis always stands higher than the rest of the menorah. The, sta the, the shamis stands out. And the reason for the shamishes standing out is because the one who serves the other deserves greater merit than if you only look after yourself. And therefore the shamas stands higher than all the other candles. A seventh concept. Candle, oil, is just a physical object. But what happens when we put some fire to it? It shines. It brightens up the entire surrounding. So too we have to understand 
that it is our task to brighten this physical world, put the flame of Torah, the candle of the mitzvah, and the whole world is going to be shining. And this is where we come to the eighth message. As we know, the number eight represents infinity, beyond nature, beyond the confines of the natural limited creation of the world. And indeed, the whole idea is of Hanukkah, to come to the eight, to reach the beyond limitation, beyond our own limitations and beyond the finite constraint of the world. And that's why Hanukkah is so intrinsically connected to Moshiach, because Moshiach is represented by the number eight. May God help us that tomorrow we should light the menorah of Hanukkah in Yerushalayim with the lights of the Beis Amikdash. A happy Hanukkah.